Okay, so good afternoon. Um, it is a pleasure to be asked to speak here today. And as Paula said, my name is Jane Carpenter and I'm a survivor of sepsis. Sepsis is a potentially life-threatening condition, as you are aware, but it can be easily treated and if it's caught early enough. Prior to the 1st of May 2016, I lived a very full and active and busy life. My role professionally was, and still is, as a nurse practitioner within scheduled care at an Iron Bevan, and this was in a pre-operative assessment unit based at the Royal Wentworth Hospital in Newport. I exercised daily and enjoyed long walks with my husband and our beloved Vimarana Harriet. I loved holidays, I've got a passion for travel, and I adored the beach both at home and abroad. The 1st of May was the day my life changed forever. This was the day I was diagnosed with neutropenic sepsis with a diagnosed community acquired pneumonia. This all arose from a one day history of a productive cough, some shortness of breath, and just feeling generally unwell. I walked into GP out of hours at Prince Charles Hospital thinking that I needed antibiotics for a chest infection, but I never walked out of there. I left the same hospital three months later with permanent and significant disabilities. The roller coaster events that followed my admission to hospital that day were completely devastating. Following my diagnosis of pneumonia at GP out of hours at 9 a.m., I was immediately taken to the clinical decisions unit. My observations at that time included being normotensive and normothermic, but I'd a raised heart rate of 145 beats a minute, a reduced oxygen saturation level ranging between 89 and 90% on air. I had a raised respiratory rate of 28, I was short of breath, and I had a new score of 6. I also had a documented diagnosis of probable neutropenic sepsis, and my treatment at that time was an oral dose of doxycycline and an encouragement to take oral fluids. I was diagnosed with severe sepsis at 11.15am, and that was the first time I received any intravenous fluids or antibiotics. My condition rapidly deteriorated, and I developed severe type 1 respiratory failure that required intubation and mechanical ventilation. I further deteriorated into septic shock and multi-organ failure. I then developed irreversible, irreversible ischemic limb necrosis secondary to the sepsis and required multiple limb amputations as both a life-changing and a life-saving procedure. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got to have my notes. I speak today as a patient who has survived sepsis, but the price I paid for my survival was bilateral below knee amputations. I had an amputation below my left elbow and partial amputations of all the fingers on my right hand. My vascular surgeon at the time fought very hard to save my right thumb, which has been a lifeline in my recovery process and is very much the key to my independence. I spent a total of nine weeks in the intensive care unit at Prince Charles Hospital followed by a two-week stay in a surgical ward. And at that point, I was dependent on help with the majority of all my activities of daily living. I was extremely grateful to the critical care staff, at the critical care outreach service at Prince Charles Hospital, who greatly improved the care I was dependent on and immensely helped my ability to cope with the traumatic events I was experiencing. From my experience, a critical care outreach is invaluable to patients like myself, who've experienced a long and traumatic intensive care stay. However, it still is an area of patient care improvement that needs to be addressed, and it needs to be staffed sufficiently to minimise the adverse physical, psychological and emotional effects of patients who have already experienced probably the most traumatic experience of their lifetime. My recovery involved a seven-month inpatient hospital stay. Three and a half months of that was undergoing intensive rehabilitation at Rookwood Hospital, and that was at the Artificial Limb and Appliance Centre. My drive for independence made my inpatient stay there more bearable. I was placed on a neurological rehabilitation ward, with the vast majority of patients there having suffered severe extensive brain injuries. It brought home to me at the time the stark reality of the difference between life and quality of life, especially in light of the fact that I had suffered multi-organ failure and prolonged periods of hypoxia, so potentially that patient could have been me as well. I refer to my life after sepsis as being like a roller coaster, and I wouldn't be human if I'd said that I hadn't um, had very really dark times when I have felt that I can't cope with my disabilities. 
and sometimes I'd wished I hadn't survived sepsis at all. My recovery from sepsis has involved living with a devastating outcome of limb loss. The emotions I have felt have been the same as those in the grieving process. You grieve not only the loss of your limbs, but the loss of the life that you had, and the ease and ability that we all take for granted to do things. I've always been active and independent, and those things were just taken away from me overnight. However, from the very beginning of my recovery, I've always tried to maintain a very positive and focused attitude. I've always given myself goals and challenges that I, that I set out and I was determined to achieve. <clears throat> One of the hardest things to overcome is going out with such a drastically changed body image. I've had to experience so many people who don't just look, which is human nature, but who physically stare and follow me with their eyes. That was and still is very hard to deal with at times. My life and recovery after sepsis has been a long journey so far, and I realise I've still got a long journey ahead, and I will always be faced with ongoing hurdles and outcomes to face in my life. However, I do feel a sense of pride in how hard I've worked and how far I have come in a relatively short period of time. This was put into context for me by a very kind gesture from one of the occupational therapists at Rookwood, who gave me a bookmark which read, Take pride in how far you have come and have faith in how far you can go. I would give everything I own to turn back the clock and undo the catastrophic life changes I had to face. However, it is something that I've had to accept and continue with the ongoing challenges I face to make my life after sepsis as fulfilling as possible. A hindering issue I've had in my life has been with the prosthetic services provided. Initially, nothing was handled in a personal or compassionate way and there was no thought, no thought concept given to the person who was re receiving the prosthetic limb, which in itself is a hugely emotive experience. I was initially given prosthetic limbs that were the same size as my husband's. So he's six foot and weighs 13 and a half stone. Prior to sepsis, I was five foot and a half and I weighed eight stone and our legs were exactly the same size. My feelings were and still are, I'm not just an arm or a leg, I am actually a person, I'm the same person. Things thankfully are improving and I'm shortly due to be given what's called a flexi foot and that will give me more lower limb movement and a functional myelectric prosthetic arm which will further improve my independence. So I am hoping that with ongoing prosthetic improvements this will enable me to live as active a life as possible. A driving force and something that has given me a sense of purpose in my life has been becoming actively involved in raising awareness of sepsis, hence my speaking here today. This has included appearing in a BBC Wales documentary with the famous Derek Brockway, and I've also given interviews and shared my story with some very high-class magazines, such as Take a Break, Woman's Own, that sort of calibre. But potentially so many people could have picked up my magazine in the GP or dentist waiting room. So I did it with the hope that it would capture a huge audience in which sepsis awareness could be raised. I hope I can use my own personal experience and adverse outcomes of developing sepsis and actually turn this into a positive thing. And I feel that helping to raise awareness of sepsis will enable me to do this and will hopefully help to save some lives in the future. Since surviving sepsis, it's made me realise how precious life really is and how quickly it can be taken away. And sepsis not only dramatically changes the lives of its victims, but it also changes the people and the lives of those who love and care for them. I've been lucky enough to have had the support, love and kindness and generosity of so many people who have fundraised, sent cards, flowers or just even said kind encouraging words. And it sounds very corny but it's totally restored and reinforced our faith in, human, in humanity. And I've also been lucky to have had the love, support and loyalty of my husband, my family and lots of friends. And I realise and very much appreciate without, without, without such support, I wouldn't be able to do lots of things I'm able to achieve in my life. Other people are not quite so lucky and they have no support at all. Today, I am determined to get my life after sepsis back together and to do all the things my husband and I planned to do before sepsis struck. I now attend a local gym and I have used a personal trainer, although you would never know it the way I attempted to go down those steps. Um, but that's in an attempt to increase my stamina, strength and my overall fitness. And I've also started doing Zumba and Fit Steps classes, which Kerry can vouch for in her video. Um, and I totally love that and I treat that as part of my psychological and my physical therapy. I recently took part 
in a four mile charity walkathon from and that was um for a, it was for Macmillan but for my part of it I'm donating my charity proceeds to the intensive care unit at Prince Charles Hospital and I will always be indebted to them because against all the odds which were pretty grim at the time they basically kept me alive and saved my life last Sunday I completed the segmed set oh how do I go back how do I go back hmm the back Space on there, isn't it? No. I literally got that one. Is that the walk of the No. I haven't got that picture. Anyway, I thought I had this one obviously on Facebook. Yeah, so um I lost where I am then. Yeah. So last Sunday I completed the segment sepsis six K. I call it run, in inverted commas. Um it was a walk in my case. And that was to support the fantastic SegMed sepsis team at Morrison Hospital and the fantastic work that they do and obviously to continue with my raising awareness of sepsis. Huge personal achievements in my life now include going out with my husband and Harriet our dog on our usual and love woodland walks and going to some of my favourite beaches on the Gower and Pembrokeshire coastlines. Is it dark? Yeah, sorry. I want my prosthetic limbs to enable me to live as active a life as possible. And my personal motto of my life after sepsis is about ability and not disability. I recently returned from a walking holiday in Solva, which is a very special place to us that we visited for the last six years. And not that our dog is spoiled, but that it's her holiday. Um, last year when we visited, I went in a wheelchair and I wasn't able to walk anywhere. And this year, Mixed up. Sorry about this. Never mind. I'll forget about it. I'll just carry on talking. It's probably the best. Yeah, so um, this year when we went, it felt completely and utterly amazing, and I actually walked it all. Um, I've completed my driving assessment and familiarisation lessons, which were a bit scary, so stay off the roads for a while if I was you. And I'm now in the process of getting my own car. So hopefully in a slightly adapted automatic vehicle, I can achieve a whole new level of independence in my life. Once I'm comfortably back driving, my aim is from a personal, professional and a psychological perspective to return to work in my existing role as a nurse prac on a part-time basis. I've recently had a meeting with my senior nurse and HR who have actually facilitated this process for me to return at the beginning of 2018. I plan to continue with my passion for travel and much to my husband's dismay, I've got a bucket list of places I want to visit. My vascular surgeon, Mr. Kevin Conway from the Royal Morgan Hospital, spoke words of encouragement to me during the initial and emotive stages of my recovery, saying, I expect, in, I expect, me, uh, sorry, I expect amazing things from you. I think he was recently quite amazed when we had the pleasure of his company at a recent fundraising ball. Um, it was quite an emotional experience to dance with him, completely unaided without crutches, but totally aided by the aid of Prosecco. And the words of encouragement he said to me at that initial time have always inspired and stayed with me, and they've given me the inner drive to make my life after sepsis as amazing as possible. Even to this day, however, it is still a difficult concept for me to comprehend how a relatively fit, active and healthy person like myself became critically and gravely ill so quickly. Sepsis, as you're all aware, if identified Um, if identified and responded to early, is so easily treated, yet still far too many mortalities occur every single year. And with patients who survive sepsis, how many are left with life-changing outcomes that myself and my family have had to face? I will always question if the disabilities that I am now faced with in my life after sepsis could have been prevented if I'd been given more prompt and effective treatment at the time of admission where I did have red flag trigger signs of sepsis. Public and healthcare professionals alike in both primary care and acute healthcare settings need to have an increase in awareness of this indiscriminate disease. Just asking the simple question, could it be sepsis, if a patient is identified as being at risk, has the potential to save lives and to minimise the devastating outcomes that can occur.
Okay, so I thank you all for your time. I apologise for the mess up in the slideshow presentation. And I welcome any questions if anybody's got anything.